It's Roger and James here from the This Kingdom podcast. In this episode, um, James is going to be telling us all about Ant-Man and the Wasp, which came out um, this past weekend in the US. Unfortunately, it's not out for a few more weeks over here for the UK. He's got his Incredibles poster out. We're only getting that this week. So it shows you, uh, for some reason this summer, they decided to delay everything. But James, so what was your initial impressions of Ant-Man and the Wasp? Uh, my quick non-spoilery uh, thoughts on the movie were that if you liked the first Ant-Man, you will like Ant-Man and the Wasp. I, I think that that's pretty obvious to most mm. people, but still, it's worth saying. It is. It takes a lot of what made the first movie good and then bumps it up a bit. Better special effects. You know, they don't have to establish the premise, so they can kind of just jump right into it. Uh, overall, very very good. Uh, Evangeline Lilly, very good as the Wasp. We got to see her in the first movie, of course, but now she gets to uh, to cut loose. The 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 primary villain. There's there's a couple villains as is usual, but the primary villain is the Ghost, and I feel like she's a fairly typical Marvel mm. villain. They give you just enough to go on, kind of fill in the blanks, and give you a basics of a backstory, but there's not much else to it. Um, but she's she's fine. She's better than Thanos was, so yeah. you know. There's that, and she was better than Yellow Jacket. I'll yeah. also give her that from the first yeah. Ant Man movie. Yeah, I mean, hopefully um, they don't kill her off because the, the thing is, they need some villains. They need to stop killing them off. Um, do you, yeah. Do you want a spoiler on that one? No, we don't need to. Okay, so I, I will, she's yeah. either dead or she's not. Um, yes. Oh, well, I'm, you'll find out. I, I do. I do have my. I do have this theory that, and I'm wondering if I am right. In one of the posting credits, a load of people go wishy washy off into um, after the end of Infinity War. Uh, no comment on that. No. However, I will say the um, the movie does not tell you what the Ant Man and Wasp were up to during Infinity War. Because as near as I can tell, this movie takes place several weeks before yeah. Infinity War does, and then there is uh, a hint of yeah. what happens during or towards the end of Infinity War, but there's no explanation at all for why Ant-Man and Wasp are not involved yeah. uh, in this. Because based on the timeline as presented, there's no reason they wouldn't be aware of what was going on. Yeah. There's no reason that they wouldn't have been able to get into it. Uh, now, there is a little bit of explanation for what might be going on in Avengers 4 with yeah. these characters, but... Yeah. Uh, you'll have to wait. There yeah. are two end, end credit sequences, one right at the beginning of the credits, one right at the end. Um, obviously, everyone knows to wait. I will say the one at the very end, yeah. it's not worth waiting for. <laughs> it's it's up there with the Captain America at the end of Spider-Man yeah. Homecoming where you're like, why did you wait to see this? I'm like, I... Because uh, you do this. It, it's not, it's, <laughs> It's not one of the better end credits. The first one, though, the one that's right at the beginning of the end credits, definitely stick around for that one. Yeah, I think this is going to be one I'll do on my own. It's like, I'll just sit there. It's just, it's part of what you do. I know, isn't it? My wife, normally, the minute the credit, the credit scenes up, she's off and gone. Um, and my dad usually, or if I take my dad, he'll be sat there going, oh, it's another one of these movies I have to sit to the end. <laughs> it's like, you just sat through a 90 minute movie. You can sit for another three or four minutes. Yeah. But uh, no, so if you, I was going to say, um, so what were some of the other highlights that you enjoyed about this one without going too detailed? I'd have to say the fights are very good. Mm -hmm. um, they play around a lot with the character sizes, as you'd yeah. expect, you know, them growing and, and shrinking. And they use that really well in the combat sequences yeah. where, you know, they'll, they'll use the, they'll shrink down real fast to evade a punch, pop back up, punch the person, shrink back down. It's really well done. Yeah. Ghost combat uh, with the character ghost is really cool uh i would also say the special effects are definitely a step up they have a lot of fun mm. uh with the chases yeah, uh, yeah chases fights in general where they would be otherwise normal if not for that you know yeah. shrink gain you've seen some of them in the trailers yeah. uh and on the flip side you know there's still that whole like it's supposed to maintain its mass, meaning it's the same weight when it's tiny. It's like you're carrying around a building, like yeah. a literal building. That thing weighs tons and tons, and you're just wheeling it around like a bag. But yeah. So, the, yeah, the physics are even wonkier than, say, Captain America's shield, but yeah. you just kind of roll with it. Yeah, yeah, we got um, to yeah, throw all that out the, out the window. But it's, you know, overall, it's a fun movie. There were a lot of laughs. Yeah. I laughed many times throughout this movie, as you would expect from the first one. The humor is actually slightly different. It's more uh, physical than in the first one. Mm. But 
you know, still all the things that you liked in the first one are here. They're back. They're amped up. Um, Stan Lee has a decent cameo in it. So, you know, I was what we were watching. Um, I can't think. I think it was either. I think it might have been the Runaways or something like that. Um, and so, like Stan Lee turns up and. My wife turned to me and she goes, why do you always laugh when he pops up? She said, you know it's coming. She said, but you all... So I said, no, I just always... it's always a funny bit when he turns up, no matter where it is. But you always laugh, no matter what it is. <laughs> I think it was... Um, I was watching the Big Hero 6 yeah. TV series recently, and he popped up in there. And I'd actually forgotten that, that yeah. he was in, uh, very briefly, in the Big Hero 6 movie. Yeah. But they, they got him to reprise his role at least once for the TV yeah. series, which was pretty good. But yeah... Um, you know, I, I think it's another one of those movies. It's probably much like the original Ant Man. It's kind of kind of fall through the cracks after its theatrical yeah. release because it's, you know, it's jammed in between Avengers three and four. You know, we had Black Panther and uh, last year Thor Ragnarok, which is yeah. currently considered one of the highlights of the series. Guardians of the Galaxy two, Captain Marvel coming up. It's it's a solid movie. But it's not one of the ones that stands out relative yeah. to the stuff that's come out uh, around it, including even non-Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe stuff like yeah. Deadpool 2, which also came out. So go and enjoy it. It doesn't do anything to to like enhance the Marvel Universe all that much. I, and they're still exploring the Pym Particles, and that might take a bigger focus at some point. But right now, yeah. you know, just go. It's a fun action popcorn movie. Uh, it's definitely worth seeing in theaters because it does have that cinematic yeah. uh, vibe to it. So that's, yeah, kinda, that's the non-spoiler review. Yeah, it's for that it. kind of weird thing. I think of you know, some, I mean, seeing people talking about it online about oh, it's a nice palate cleanser after Infinity War. Or it's and there's yes. a lot of pe- there's been a few people kind of going like there's a lot of people going oh, it's good, but I think there's that kind of thing of it. It's it's not blowing people away, and I, the trouble is they can't do that every time. This is just back back to basics, back to a solid solid movie yeah i mean if you reinvent the wheel with every single movie then eventually it no longer means anything we've yeah. seen that with comics all the time uh you know the source material mm. nothing will be the same again it's like sometimes i don't want that sometimes no. i just want the fun little heist movie or the you know mm. uh spider-man just beating up a couple of muggers and maybe he takes down doc ock on the way home and that's it it's a yeah. little one part or two parter mm. comic nothing earth shattering the you know Aunt May is still fine at the end of it. Mary Jane and Peter yeah. still have their relationship issues. Whatever. It doesn't have to be world changing. Yeah. And that's one of the what this movie is. This is yeah. that kind of palate cleanser, like you said, is actually yeah. a really good way because it's it doesn't have massive consequences, but it's still a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's a good solid movie. It'll kind of get lost in the cracks with the the other movies coming out around it, but. You know that's okay. Yeah. It'll it'll go in. It'll make its money. It'll come out on DVD and Blu-ray and all that stuff. And and it'll be part of like the people who want to watch the whole thing. Yeah. You know, from Iron Man one up to whatever the current movie is. But you know, yeah. it's not going to change anyone's perception yeah. of the MCU. I must admit, it's it was a li- it's that kind of thing of going back to that. Like, you know, like I want to watch and like you look on Marvel UK's Twitter or Facebook. And they'll be like, three weeks to go. And all the comments are like, why, why, why? And that's The and, entire thing is stupid. Yeah. I mean, and it, it's so weird, too, because normally... We get them early. It, yeah, you get them a week before we do. Yeah. I don't know why. I, I know mean, we've talked yeah. about it. Yeah. yeah, we know why. We've talked yeah. about it in the past. But it, it's really just stupid. Incredibles 2, you should have had it at the same yeah. time we had it. Ant-Man and the Wasp should have been at the same time that you had it. There is no reason in the no. current environment that... We have these non-global releases, especially in countries that speak the same language. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah, sure, in Japan or China, maybe a little bit later because you've got to do the translation yeah. into those languages. But we speak the same language, minus yeah. plus or minus a couple of superfluous yeah. U's here and there. So you know, yeah, yeah I and mean, it's just that it's just that weird thing as well of like all because marketing as well is so viral now. You know, we see all the we see all the same adverts on YouTube and we see the same posters. And all the same bits and pieces, and then suddenly, you know, people people get confused because, rightfully so, you know, you have an incredible poster behind you that literally says June fifteenth, and it's exactly that kind of thing of, you know, that kind of marketing gets out. So it's a little annoying, especially in this kind of thing of Marvel stuff. Um, rather than the Infinity War, where 
you know, so, it's going to be so easy for spoilers to split out, for get out with weeks. You know, one thing is a week, but three, four weeks, it's going to be tough to go. But I um, can't wait to see it. So hopefully we'll talk about it once I go see it as well. So let us know what you guys think of Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, don't, I know, you know, don't Still don't spoil it because I do read them. Um, but anyway, guys, thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back soon with another episode of this Kingdom podcast. And James, where can they find you? Find me heroiclegacy.com. On that note, guys, thank you very much for watching. See you guys soon. Laters. Later. Later.